Hello and welcome to the channel. This is Steel City Nars. One of my favourite series. This is this is where we're looking at other people's collections. But this is a, sort of a question and answer uh, video. So this is like getting rid of the collection and just focusing on the person that's collecting them. So trying to delve a bit deeper, what makes them tick, what they enjoy collecting. Uh, and we've done this by uh, getting together 10 questions and a lot of people in the community have put some of these questions forward. Uh, and then it's it's to sort of just try and work out that person, what they enjoy collecting and find out a bit about the person themselves. So, um, and, you know, I... I thoroughly enjoy this. It's a lot of editing. Uh, hopefully, there'll be a lot of knives along the way, but it's sort of a deep dive into a collector's brain, essentially. <laughs> That's what I, the reasoning behind it was. So, I sit back and enjoy. Right, the first question, and what we're going to do if somebody... So, I when we started this series out, I, I put it out on my community page if anybody wanted to have some questions answered. Um, so you put the question forward. So anybody that's done that, I'm going to give them a bit of a shout out. So this one is from MB underscore EDC. So he's a UK channel. I know Mark personally. He's a brilliant guy, really nice guy. Uh, he's got an excellent channel. So he deals with all EDC stuff, knives being one of them. But yeah, really brilliant channel. Go check it out. Subscribe if you're not already subscribed. But cheers, Mark. I appreciate it, mate. So his question that he wanted answered was... If you could only collect one brand or maker, which one would it be? Which is an excellent, you know, it's like picking your favourite child. And Ian answered this in a way that probably I can relate to. He said, at the moment. So he chops and changes. Now, don't get me wrong, there's some people in the community are die hard. Uh, just, they love one brand. Uh, and they know that. And they're really, but I'm probably like Ian. I do chop and change a lot. Uh, and I think a lot of us can probably relate to that. So at the moment, he loves George Walston Home, and that's his favourite brand at the moment. Uh, and obviously, it's a brilliant um, sort of brand to love because they span such a, a massive amount of time. So you can have vintage, and you can have antique, and you can have to the modern day. So you've got this massive amount of knives you can pick from. So just a little snippet, because I like to chuck in a little bit of history. I, I realised that they were awarded their uh, silver mark in 1809. So a silver mark is different from like the Cutler's side of things. Uh, and uh, silver uh, was uh, obviously a massive deal for Sheffield. Uh, and I'm talking about like fruit knives or table uh, wear and things like that. So just dealing with silver alone. So they're sort of like silver stamp, so to speak. But yeah, just found that out um, um, and I thought I'd lob that in there. But yeah, so the other brands that um, Ian sort of just makes a bit of a nod to is Boca, because he's got a phenomenal Boca collection, Arthur Wright. So sometimes your favourite brand doesn't have to be this really expensive premium brand. It can be something that give, offers you a lot of value for money, and that's why you love that brand, because of the quality you're getting for the amount that you're paying. So I can relate to that a lot, being a tight guy. <laughs> I like a bit of value for money. Also, he mentions Otter and um, Victorinox as well. So cheers, Ian. Right, question two is what started them collecting? This is from my mate Drew White. And if you don't know Drew White, uh, he's a northern guy, massive Sheffield fan. Uh, he also took part in this. So if you didn't see that video, go back and watch it. He had some phenomenal knives in his collection. Uh, I'm proud to call him a friend uh, and just a great guy. But this was his question. What started them collecting? Uh, so he put that he started in 1980 with a Southern uh, and Richardson knife. And I'll put that up now. So... A, a, a website that I sort of go to a lot um, had this to say on the company so you can pause it there or just talk in the background as well so quite a historic um, company Sheffield company and quite a big one to be honest um, definitely within the sort of top 20 of their era uh, but then you got to imagine how many companies there were back then but yeah, this website is absolutely phenomenal and it's sort of Ken Hawley's, um, a lot of it is Ken Hawley's work, but obviously the, but there's a committee that still preserve it and, and, and are part of it. So there's a lot of people going on in the background that unsung heroes, but yeah, it's sort of from the Ken Hawley uh, tool 
collection, a lot of this information that he gained throughout his years. Uh, I'll be sort of showing a bit of uh, Ken Hawley. He's a bit of a hero of mine, uh, and probably not enough uh, knife collectors know about him, but he was the king of the collectors. Uh, I'll be putting a few shorts together because I went and seen part of his collection in Sheffield, so I'll do a, uh, just a video dedicated to that. But yeah, a bit of an unsung hero, really, is that Ken. Uh, unfortunately, he's passed away now, but uh, God rest his soul. Uh, but yeah, so Southern and Richardson, um, a phenomenal um, brand. I, I don't have one in my collection. I'd love to have one. Uh, again, they had a silver mark in 1902, uh, but their corporate mark from the 1880s was a bird's nest with three eggs. And sometimes uh, they were referred to as nest cutlery. Uh, but yeah, they they were a brilliant company, quite a big uh, established company back in the day. Uh, one of the things that um, I found out through uh, Ken Hawley's uh, information there on that site, was that they had a massive industrial accident. Now, uh, probably one of the one of the biggest ones that were were known. And unfortunately, seven people lost their lives. Uh, some children, unfortunately, as well, because that's how uh, young children worked back in those days. Uh, and that's sometimes stuff that you don't hear, Robert. These big industrial uh, plants didn't have the health and safety that we have today. And, and the accidents did occur and there were things like that that happened. But one a, a big one happened at the Southern and Richardson's plant and seven people lost their lives. But yeah, so right, a bit of a morbid side to it there, but it's history nevertheless. Right, on to question three. Okay, this is question three, and this is by my mate Retro Stu. And I have not spoke to you in ages, mate. I'm going to drop you a message after this because I miss you, buddy. I ain't going to lie. Me and, it, me and Stu were like messaging what we were picking up recently, and we got quite tight. I ain't messaged him in ages. I've been, and, and, and I, you know, there's certain people you don't want to drift apart from, and, and Stu's one of them. And he only lives down the road from me, so, I'm, you know, it's reminding me to drop him a message. I miss you, Stu. <laughs> but right, so his question was, uh, do you have any rules to collect them? Which is a really interesting question, really. Uh, because it's the way you rationalise your collecting in your mind, which it, it, there can be so many. And I, I had a few and they went out the window when I started YouTube. But let's see what Ian has. Uh, to say about this now some people might think this is a bizarre question because they don't have any rules they just buy whatever they want but i think all of us somehow have some um, rules that we try and adhere to uh, and one that um, ian has well he said he doesn't have any rules but he did make this comment i never spent more than 200 pound on a knife and that and that's a big one sometimes cost can be a massive one even though that is bizarre in itself, because if you add up two months worth of some of your knife purchases, sometimes that could equate to a really expensive knife. So it's just the way you rationalise your collecting in your brain. But I thought it was a brilliant question, Stu, uh, and one that's always good to hear uh, from different collectors what they think about the that sort of question. Um, but yeah, uh, put in your comments, put down in the comments if you if you've got any rules to your collecting. Okay, this is question four, and this is from Ian Rosie. Thank you very much, Ian Rosie. We all know him in the community. I appreciate this one. So, favourite steel type. Now, this is a topic all on its own, and you can go into great depths of this, and people really do uh, focus on this on certain channels, uh, and it's uh, you know it can be a contributing factor of what knife they'll buy. I think there's a lot of uh, steel snobs out there, <laughs> for better or worse. Uh, you know, uh, and, and rightly so, because it's, it is a big makeup, I suppose, of the knot. Now, personally, me, uh, I'm, I'm, it's not a, def a deciding factor on whether I buy the knife or not. Uh, but we all have a, a, a different uh, sort of um, opinion about what we like or dislike and all the rest of it. So it's, an, it's, a, it's a good question and a hot topic within, you know, the hobby, really. So... The question was favourite steel type. Now, I think Ian Rosie wanted us to be more specific, but a lot of the people that are answering this uh, for the collectors, uh, I've just seen it as the carbon stainless steel divide. But um, hopefully, 
as this series progresses, we'll have all kinds of different collections. Uh, and some people might be more specific with it. Now, Ian hasn't. He's just said he prefers carbon. He's not specified what carbon steel he prefers. And one of the uh, factors why he likes that is he likes the patina on it. Although he does state, I've got nothing against stainless. Uh, you know, uh, but I think that question can sometimes have more depth than that. You can go into specific steels and all the rest of it. So it's quite an open, massive question. I mean, steel type, you could spend loads of videos going over it, and you know, it is it's a big it's a big topic. Um, I've never sat down and thought what's my favourite steel. I must admit, and and, and there's a, a wide variety out there. Um, and I think there's a lot of people in sort of my camp where we just love everything and all the different and that's the variety of this hobby isn't it really the different steel types but yeah so Ian has put carbon and he's put it because he likes that patina on it so cheers Ian thanks for that quite thanks for that uh, answer Okay, we've got question five, most carried knife. And this is from Ray over at North Star Knife Review. Really good channel. I really like Ray. He's a really nice guy. He's commented a lot on the channel. Go give him a sub if you're not. He's somebody I hope to get to know a lot more in the future. Just seems like a really personal, nice chap. And I really like, like his content. So his question to everyone is, most carried knife. Now, Ian was brilliant here, and he's opened up another avenue to this, really, and a, quite an important one as well. He sh he's shown what he sort of carries on his key ring, and the other people uh, before him didn't put this, but it's a very big part of, you know, your daily carry, I suppose. And the one that he puts on his key ring is the Midnight Manager, which seems to be really popular at the moment, and a lot of people really rate it. I know MBs rates it, uh, and obviously Ian does, so it's probably one that I probably want to get in the collection and check out. I know, I think it's got the the torch so it sort of covers all bases and then his modern he's got this bokeh atlas um which is a really slim carry it's really really is slim and it's got a pocket clip so it's sort of like a modern uk legal because it's a slip joint but he's got it with a copper and that thing looks brilliant it's got a drop point it's like a samvik steel uh really nice one there uh, so and then he's got an alpha right and the basic rosewood and he's gone for the lamb's foot blade uh, you can't go wrong with an alpha right and uh, I, I think if you know this channel and you know you know I, I really have uh, uh, laid that on thick but I, I do love an alpha right knife uh, okay and then pioneer a locks and this is really sweet and it's Call me an old softer, but I, I generally think this is a good idea and something that maybe I should do myself. So it's a Pioneer Alox, but it's got his granddaughter's name on it. Now, I, throughout the years, people have bought me stuff with my kids' names on it, pictures and things like that. Uh, a few Zippos, actually, have got my uh, kids' names on it. It's probably to guilt me to quit smoking, so every time I got it out, I've seen their face. Now, I just put them as best and put them away, but maybe we shouldn't. Maybe we should be carrying these things and it's as soft as it sounds it just reminds you of your loved ones every time you get it out and use it but yeah i really like that ian that's a nice touch mate uh, and then the victorinox bantam which is a really slim carry this is my barbecue knife this is this is when summer rolls around and you you know you might be in shorts it's a slim carry it's got the uh, knife on it and the bottle opener you'll be down somebody's garden somebody chucks you a cold bottle of beer you know it's there it's not you know it's they're so slim you hardly notice you carried them but yeah brilliant uh selection there and he did this wicked picture of like all of them together so cheers him okay question six is from the one and only zen ali the coolest guy in the community as far as i'm concerned uh oh, zen's the man mate honestly and i loved his bokeh collection from uh warthog that was class that was absolutely class uh, but yeah, so Zen, uh, this is such a cool question as well. What are you going to do with your collection when you're gone? So uh, yeah, but this was an interesting question and uh, can only come from the brain of Zen Ali. Uh, but yeah, no, I thought it was a cool question to ask and an interesting one as well. So Ian has, um, his daughter's got a, a, an actual Victorian Arts collection. So he's, and, and that's the thing. Sometimes you'll have um, kids that are into one thing and, and not the other, or one might be a bit, you know, like camping, a bit of an outdoorsman, so your fixed blades go to them. Uh, somebody, you know, 
you might have a few people that work in an office environment and you give them more you like your, you you know sort of gentleman carries and things like that so you know you you you, you sort of determine who's getting what uh, early doors before that day ever comes um, so um this for Ian so obviously his daughter's got a Victorian arts collection so she, he said all of my Victorian arts will go to her which is really cool and she'll love them I'm sure um, and then this was brilliant mate and I, <laughs> I might hold you to this <laughs> he put, I might send him a Steel City knife so uh, but I'll be honest with you guys with my uh, industry and how badly I smoked and uh, I, I think some of you uh, guys will outlive me mate I'm sure so I'm getting my will uh, ready to carve it up amongst you guys I'm sure but um, definitely but yeah you never know when your time's coming do you so even even if you've got a few years on people you never know well, what God's got in you know in store for you really do you so uh, but yeah thank you very much Ian and um, I've got um, I've got written proof of that mate so I think that's legally binded now I'm only joking <laughs> I'm only joking but what a collection to get uh, but yeah no I appreciate that but it made me chuckle when I, when I read it definitely but I'll be honest with you um, a lot of these collections like if you take Ian's or, or, or Drew's or, or Roland's or any of them they are a considerable amount of value and on a serious note you've because my missus bless her we went Sheffield recently and she tried to have a bit of a chat with some people and it was hot it was uh, she was getting so many things wrong she was trying to you know bless her she she picks up a few things from me but sometimes they don't know the value of things and and we really need to either log them or do something don't um because there's a lot of value in these collections so just uh, try and educate and, and put 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 people right that are uh, your benefit fisheries uh, so you know it, it benefits them when that time comes um, on a serious note sorry we just had a chuck and I just brought it way down guys but uh, you know what I mean it's it's something that we need to do I think Okay, we've got question seven. What is your grail knife? Now, when he sent me the answer to this, it really did take me back. So his grail knife, believe it or not, is a 2015 limited edition uh, Victorinox Pioneer or Cadet. Now, why that took me back is I uh, collect, I picked up, it was only last year, 2018 Victorinox to mark my uh, daughter's uh, sort of birth year and then give it to her one day, the, a knife obviously uh, sort of manufactured in her birth year. But I wanted to get one for my son. Obviously, he was born in 2015, but I'm struggling to find it. So when I seen that, I thought, hey, what, you know, that, what's the coincidence in that? But he's got the collection, so he's trying to collect all the years. So if anybody in the community has got one of them, contact at me or Ian definitely but uh, yeah uh, just a, a nice one and, and grail knives can be funny like that um, sometimes you just want to complete that collection they're not always something that's like uh, a really high value thing it's just something that you want to complete a collection in and that's where Ian's got his grail knife from right brilliant answer right question eight so this is, the question is what is your favorite knife in the collection and what is your worst knife in the collection um, so uh, good, uh, it's it's a it's a good way. I suppose your favourite knife is always changing. So especially when you've got a sort of a collection like Ian's, but this is his favourite knife. So it's a swell centred jackknife from Boca, and it's in Tuja wood. I think it's pronounced Tuja, is it Thurja? Now this sort of wood, I, I think, is sort of synonymous with Boca. I know they've used it a lot on a lot of their knives, and it's such a beautiful wood. Now, I could go into great detail about this. Is the thing when you get into knives, you just then start getting into it. It does. It, ma it makes you get into a lot of other things, be it like whittling or leather work, or you know, sort of even um, makes you want to get outdoor more and camp and things like that. But just the covers on it. So wood is one of those covers that comes in so many different forms. There's so many different species, and you know. And it really does make you sort of uh, sort of research it a bit more and, and get into it a bit more. So one site that I really like to look at when I'm checking out like new wood handle covers and things like that is the wood database. It seems to be like a really good site. 
and it goes into really good detail and tells you even like what it smells like and is it endangered and you know what the cost of it is in general what it's mainly used for it's a really good source of like research or if you just want to find out what your covers are like or you know the properties of them and things like that so but this uh i think it's pronounced two two jar or something but i always call it thursia but and sometimes i think it's spelled with a, a y and a j um but yeah so yeah go check that website out if you if you've got uh, if you know a, a, you know, your wood covers and you want to know a bit more about them because i i love wood i i think it's such a uh, it's a really warm cover material and it, there's so much variety with it and in the community there are a lot of people really knowledgeable people i think there's a lot of carpenters out there i know drew white's a carpenter and he actually has recovered a few wooden knives and done a phenomenal job on uh byron kennedy he's he makes furniture and stuff like that uh similar to drew so there's a lot of people out there that um, sort of, you know, uh, I think Zen Ali, Zen Ali was a carpenter. Um, but yeah, so there's a lot of, um, a lot of people out there that if you needed to tap them up, I think for a bit of knowledge or info, there's a lot in the community that know about wood. So, uh, there's probably a joke in there somewhere, <laughs> but anyway, so, um, yeah, so his favorite is this amazing boker and it is, it's stunning. Um, I'm quite. I'm, I'm. The more I look at that, Ian, the more I, I, I want to get one myself. And then he, his worst is this brother sixteen fifteen. So it's a lock knife. And one of the comments he made about it is it's like sandpaper, and it does. It looks really grippy handle, which I suppose has its benefits. But he just really, you know, dislikes it. Well, it's his worst knife, should I say? But. Uh, brother's a funny company. I, I'm going to do a video on, on Brother. I've got um, a knife that would make an interesting video. Not a kind of video that you think it would be either. It's more a topic. It's, uh, But yeah. Uh, right, anyway, so on to the next question. Right, question nine. How many knives do you have in the collection? So I, I came up with this. Uh, my philosophy on collecting has changed massively now. So... I, I'm, it's sometimes it's not about quantity, and sometimes it's not even about quality. It's just for the, the like my first video for the love of knives, and I think everybody's the same in the knife community. It's it's a, it's, a, it's brilliant like that. I think people get excited just as much over a rough rider than a, you know a more premium knife, and I think even if you're not into say fixed blades, if you see a good fixed blade. Uh, it does spark your interest and that's that's the good thing about this hobby really we're interested in all kinds of stuff and we like learning just about knives in general so uh but yeah so if, if you're somebody that's uh, watching this and you've got a small collection or you might think you know your collection doesn't relate to the channel don't uh, I'd, you'd be surprised and i think everyone would enjoy to see um any co any kind of collection so uh, don't ever feel like, wow, well, look at all these collections that have come before me because we all love knives no matter what they are. So, yeah, get in contact. Uh, but, yeah, let's just so. But uh, on the other hand of that, let's <laughs> see how many Ian's got in his collection. So he's got just over 400 folding knives, which is insane, mate. <laughs> and I hope your missus ain't watching. And then just under 40 fixed blades. So brilliant collection there, Ian. Right, on to the next question. Right, that final question, question 10. And I thought of this one, this is, uh, uh, and very selfishly as well, because I still see myself as quite new to the hobby. So this is any advice. So any advice that you can give to fellow collectors, tips and tricks that you picked up along the way. And we've had some brilliant answers on this so far. But Ian's gave us two brilliant bits of advice here. One is check and double check descriptions. I'm sure we could all agree with that and not many of us do it. And we have been caught, I've been caught out a lot with that. And so to save you a lot of grief, check and double check the descriptions. That's dimensions and uh, uh, handle material, all sorts of stuff. Some descriptions can be very vague. Ring the seller up, double check. So yeah, brilliant bit of advice there, Ian. And then the other one was um, save your big knife purchases for special occasions. Um, and then obviously it's a bit lighter on yours. Or he chips in with his, so his his wife contributes, and then he'll put some in. So a nice way of like. Um, uh, 
cutting down the cost, but also uh, it makes it a lot more memorable because you remember it maybe a Christmas you went and visited somebody. It just reminds you of that special time as well. Plus, I don't know about you guys, but it's a gift you actually want. And sometimes as men or women are hard to buy for, and at least it's something you know you'll cherish and love. So, um, but yes, two brilliant bits of advice. Thank you very much, Ian, for getting involved. I've, and, and this isn't the end. We're still going to do, uh, he's still got a lot more of his collections to go over. We've got somebody waiting in the wings. So really enjoying this series. Thank you all that contributed to the questions. And I'll see you on the next one. Cheers.